Alright, so welcome back. It's been a while, and as you can probably tell, I'm not in the same room I was in my last video. I'm actually in my dorm room right now because I've been busy doing school work, and I'm excited to get back to making videos now that I have a little bit of downtime. But today, we're going to get right into it. We're going to be talking about coding events for when parts are touched. So, let's get right into it. So what we're going to start out by doing here is we're going to add a part into the game and I'm just going to move it over here and in our little properties window down here we're going to make sure that anchored is set to true because otherwise we're going to have some weird things going on. But we're going to open up our part here we're going to click on this and add a script and we're going to delete this because we don't need it. We're going to start with defining our part and our part is going to be script.parent because when we have our script, the item right above it is our part, so it is the parent of the script. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to write a function called onTouch, and we're just going to say part dot brick color equals brick color dot blue. And what this is going to do is whenever the part is touched, it's going to change the color to blue. But Nothing's actually going to happen until we type this next line. So part.touched. You see in the autocomplete here how there's a little yellow lightning bolt next to it. That means that it's an event. So that's when something happens. So when the part is touched, which is what's happening, we want to connect. Ooh, we want to use a colon there. Connect on touch. And so what this means is whenever the touched event of part happens so whenever someone touches the part it's going to run the code in the on touch function so that means whenever we're touched we're going to change the brick color of the part to be blue so if i click play right now you see where's the part it's still gray but if i run over it it's going to turn blue and if i run over it more times it's going to turn blue um, just because we only set it to turn blue if we set it to change random colors it would be a different color every time i touched it but one thing to keep in mind when you are coding this is there is a property of parts called can touch, which means if I uncheck this box and I click on play, now the event will no longer fire. So if you're ever having issues, make sure that box is checked. It's on by default, so you shouldn't have to worry about it too much. But Let's do another thing that I think is a is a little bit more fun. We are going to create an explosion um, whenever the part is touched. So we're going to start by saying local exp, which is short for explosion, equals instance dot new explosion. And don't forget when you're typing your code, if you ever press tab on your keyboard, it'll auto complete what it's telling you. So I'm not actually like just this fast at typing. I just use the autocomplete a lot. So next we're going to type exp.position equals script.parent.position, which is going to put our explosion at the same spot as where the part is so that it's going to look like the part is exploding. And next we're going to set the parent of the explosion to be our part. I actually wrote script.parent instead of part up here. Whoops. It's supposed to be part.position. And so what this is going to do is it's going to create this explosion. It's going to move the explosion to the position of our part, so right here in the world. And it is going to set the parent of the explosion to the part, so that way the explosion is in the world. Now normally when we add something to a game, we want to later go on and remove it, but explosions automatically remove after they've exploded, so we don't have to worry about removing anything. So, now you can see, if I go ahead and run the game here, if I walk over the part, I explode aggressively, so so aggressively I actually fall through the world. And so every time I touch it, I will explode over and over again, and hopefully it'll happen. It's not going to happen. I was hoping it would happen, so if I, if I touch it and explode, another part of my body would uh, touch it and cause another explosion. But it looks like my head just really enjoys falling through the base plate. Oh, it didn't that time. Let's go. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and delete all this code for now. And we're going to look at how to get the object that has touched the part. So what we're going to do is in our parentheses here, we're just going to type hit. And this hit is going to represent the object that has touched it. So if your leg has touched the part, it's going to be your leg that is represented by the word hit. So 
what we're going to do, just as an example, is we're going to set hit dot brick color to equal brick color dot red. And what I'm going to do here is if I hit play, then if I touch it with my legs, you see my legs turn red. And if I go ahead and I rotate my character so that a different part touches it, you see now my head has changed color and the rest of my body has changed color as soon as they hit it. So that's how we find hit. And what we're going to talk about next is how to make this into a kill brick. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this, but one thing I want to take note of real quick, let me add my character back into the game so I can show you guys. So if we look in our explorer here, we have, this is my character right here in the world. If I open this up, you can see everything that makes me, you know, what I am. So I'm going to move this out of the way real quick. And what we want to get to is, I had to open that up again, uh, is our humanoid. And our humanoid stores our health. So if I have set my health to zero, I die. And so in order to make a kill brick, what we want to do is create a piece of code that changes that number of our health to be zero. So what we're going to do is... I just want to show you how we get to it. So let's say our left foot touches the block. So what we want to do is in our, what this is called our character, this little model we have, is we want to go up to the parent of our character and go to the humanoid. That's a terrible arrow, but hopefully you get a good understanding of what we're going to do here to get the humanoid. So we're going to start by saying local car, short for character, chair, I don't know how you want to say it, um, equals hit dot parent. And then after that, we're going to do local hum, short for humanoid, equals care colon find first child humanoid. And then if hum, then, and what this is going to do is sometimes something will touch our part that is not a person. So let's say, for example, a flying piece of debris just comes down and knocks onto the part. Then it's not going to find a humanoid and it's going to be really confused and our code will break. So what we need to do is make sure that the humanoid exists. So if the humanoid exists, then all we're going to do is set hum.health equal to zero. And now if we press play, let me move this back to where it belongs. Go, go. Go back. Go. If I hit play and I touch this, I die instantly. And if I do it again, still dead. Yeah, that's our basic kill brick. There's better ways to do it, but just for a basic beginner kill brick, I think this should be good enough. Since we have some extra time, if you guys want to go above and beyond and make a little fancier version, um, we're going to go up here and change care to hit find first ancestor which is a model and what this is going to do is sometimes what can happen with these kill bricks is we go into our uh, thing and ooh, go back and if we open this sometimes our handle the parent is the hat and there is no humanoid inside of our hat so what we have to do is instead of going up to find our character once, we have to go up once to this and then go up one more time. And we don't know how many times we have to do that because we don't know how far down it is. So what, what this does is instead of going to just the parent, it will go all the way up that it has to in order to find the model or our character. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do if care then just in case there is no character and it's something in the world. Um, and we're just going to copy and paste the rest of this in there. And now if I stop and run the game again, you'll see that it has the same effect. Uh, for us, we won't notice, but if someone has an accessory on their feet or something, it will stop them from not dying when it's touched. That is all I have for today. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe like um, I don't remember what other things there are but I don't know if you guys have any ideas for what you want me to make or any just let me know in the comments and I will work on making it when I have free time but thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you again soon